In this video, we will understand GPT-3 from its research paper. First of all, kudos to the people who contributed this paper. While I will read this paper in this video, I highly recommend reading this paper for a deep dive. The research paper clearly stated that the current trend of NLP where people use pre-trained network followed by the fine-tuning on specific task. You love and I love this pattern since pre-trained network reduced a lot of training time and efforts and all I need to take care of is just fine-tuning. But do you really think fine-tuning is easy and small task? I don't think so. Fine-tuning for your specific task also requires a lot of data and time. What if we can skip the fine-tuning? Well, that sounds really good. Yes, this research paper will show you the amazing result of the GPT-3, which doesn't require fine-tuning on specific task at all. Well, what is the magic behind? The magic is the few shot learning. Okay, okay, hold on, and there are a few terms we should understand before going to the next page of the research paper. First of all, what is the GPT? GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Then, what is Transformer? Well, this is a transformer which is introduced by the Google in 2017, one of the NLP game changer, and still many state-of-the-art NLP models are derived from this architecture. I wouldn't go detail in this uh, in this video of this architecture, but feel free to visit my another video to know detail of this architecture. The transformer has two main modules: encoder and decoder. Well. The GPT is derived from the decoder of print transformer. You might heard about BERT, that is derived from the encoder of transformer. Well, even research groups are different. Actually, the BERT, GPT are like sisters from the transformer. There was GPT version 1. The performance was really great on multiple NLP tasks. Unfortunately, Google brought BERT, which is from the encoder of the transformer and achieved better performance on the multiple NLP tasks. Later, GPT brought its version 2. Not only better performance, but also GPT-2 could write a story just like human writer. It seems like the GPT and BERT are competing in a good way. Nowadays, most people focus on fine-tuning on top of the pre-trained NLP network. This is obvious previous uh, process uh, until now, but the GPT-3 is telling us that fine-tuning also requires huge efforts and time, and maybe fine-tuning is unnecessary by using few shot learning. This makes sense to me. Pre-trained model with larger data already has huge information, and it would be the best if we utilize this technology rather than adding task-specific dense layer with label data. Fuchsia learning is much more like human uh, learns a task, and I will explain it after I speak about the language model. Mm, the research paper stated that the GPT-3 is auto-regressive language model. Well, first, what is a language model? Language model is a machine learning model that predicts next word given previous words. And the uh, auto-regressive language model is a language model where its current output depends on its previous output. The RNN transformer decoders are autoregressive as well. For example, if the input is how and the GPT output R, the next input will be how and R to generate the next word. Okay, then now we understood what is GPT and the definition of the reg autoregressive model. It is time to understand the key of GPT-3, which is few shot learning. In order to know the few shot learning, we better start from the zero shot learning. There are daddy uh, and his baby, and daddy is telling there is a milk cow. And then daddy again telling there is a horse. And the baby haven't seen zebra yet, but the daddy can teach her that the zebra is a horse have milk cow skin color. Even the baby haven't seen the zebra, now the baby can recognize the zebra with her knowledge. This is zero-shot learning, and actually human learns in this way a lot from parents, school, or her friends. One-shot learning is easier for the baby. Once daddy shows monkey picture to this baby, then the baby can recognize the other monkey. She doesn't need a lot of the monkey images with multiple batches and multiple epochs, so definitely much smarter than CNN. Future learning is even easier for this baby. Daddy shows multiple dog images to her. Here's another dog. 
then the baby can recognize the dog. She still just needs just a few samples of the class. She is definitely smarter than CNN, and you should understand the first page of research paper now. So let's go to the next page. Here the page, uh, here the, the paper is stating the problem of the current NLP trend with fine tuning, and suggesting in context learning, which is a few shot learning, which we just had a look. During training the language model, it can learn broad set of skills and pattern recognition ability. The diagram has a number calculation, misspelling detection, and translation example. In this paper, we will see test results on small parameter model to the 175 billion parameter models from the zero-shot learning to the few-shot learning model, but we can think the 175 billion parameter with few-shot learning model is the largest of the GPT-3 model. By looking at this chart, we can understand why GPT-3 should have 175 billion of parameter with few-shot learning. Accuracy goes higher with more parameters and more samples on the few-shot learning. My previous few-shot learning example were with image, but here you can see the real GPT-3's few-shot learning example. As you can see, there is no example but only task description in zero-shot learning, and one example for the one-shot learning, and multiple examples in the few-shot learning. It was interesting to see compute power comparison from the, this paper. You can see the largest GPT-3 uses 10 times higher compute power than the T5 largest model. Okay, let's look at GPT-3 approach here. Here, they reconfirming that the GPT-3 never used fine tuning, and instead it is using future learning during language model training. They honestly stated that the disadvantage of the future learning is so far been much worse than the state-of-art fine-tuned model on some NLP tasks and still requires small amount of task-specific data. The good news for GPT-2 users that is the GPT-3 architecture is just the same as GPT-2. I won't go to GPT-2 architecture in this video, but there are plenty of good videos or blogs illustrating the GPT-2 architecture. GPT-3's train data is a common crawl data set. In order for the good quality training, they had three steps. First, they filtered only good data. Second, they did fuzzy deduplication. Third, added high quality data on it. Eventually, they collected 300 billion tokens, some data are seen up 3.4 times, while other data are seen less than once. I think this is really high quality data collection, and you will find why this is important, almost end of this video. GPT-3 trained with larger batch size but smaller learning rate. And you can see the detail of the training process here. It is time to see the performance on multiple NLP tasks. First is the language model test. GPT-3 sets a new state of art on pantry bank data. Next test is Lambada. This test is to check how the model will predict the last word of the sentence. Here again, GPT-3 sets a new record of the, uh, of the zero-shot learning, and we also can find uh, the few-shot learning model has higher score. In this slide, you can see how the Lambda test looks like. GPT-3 achieved an 86.4% accuracy, which is over 18% from the previous state of the art. Next test is a Hella Swag, which is the best, uh, which is a test to check how the model is good at picking the best ending to the story or set of instruction. GPT-3 score was lower than the state of art on this testing. But this score is still good, con uh, good considering the GPT-3 doesn't use fine tuning. GPT-3 score on story close was 4.1% lower than the fine tuned state of art using a BERT based model. GPT-3 had great score on closed book question answering. Few shot learning model outperforms than this state of art model. Next is translation test. We know labeling. Uh, translation data is really expensive and time-consuming. Since GPT-3 doesn't use fine-tuning, they made no effort to select either for or against foreign language, which is a huge benefit of the few-shot learning. 
Amazingly, GPT-3 output performs on French to the English and German to English state of art supervised model. GPT-3 resulted a lower score on determining which word a pronoun refers to. Normally, bidirectional models get, get advantage on this task while GPT-3 is a one-directional model. On common sense reasoning task, GPT-3 is winner on physical QA task but performed lower on other data set. Well, the reading comprehension is a very difficult task of NLP model now, where the human performance is higher than many machine learning models now. GPT-3 unfortunately has a lower score on this part. Here is a super glue score to compare with popular models such as BERT. The largest GPT-3 has higher score than BERT from this chart. And we can see that GPT-3 has a low score on the ability to understand the relationship between two sentences. One of the interesting findings from this paper is the GPT-3 is good at simple math, while it is just unsupervised language model. You can find the few shot learning model has 100% on two-digit addition. I think most of you are interested in this section. You may remember GPT-2 could write a story. GPT-3 is upgraded and this time they wrote news. And let human identify if the news is from human or machine. And amazingly, testers accuracy was 52% meaning they thought 48% of GTP3 news as real news. This is one of the most difficult news articles from GPT3, GPT and this is one of the easiest news articles from GPT3. Another task where the GPT3 can perform well is correcting English grammar. You can find the GPT3 correct English grammar really well with very small example at the beginning. Now let's have a look at the limitation of GPT-3. We already have seen GPT-3 is still weak on the some, some of NLP task. One of architectural drawback of this GPT-3 is it, it, it doesn't have the bidirectional information, while the bidirectional can uh, give more context information and help filling in the blank, uh, the blank test. And the GPT-3 can improve by adding the noising process and even with qualified data. It is interesting and right direction to highlight the risk of misuse of this kind of very powerful technology. I found a very interesting section at the almost end of this paper that's showing the bias of this model. Since the model is on supervised learning from the larger text, this language model actually have a bias on its data set. Here is the word bias toward one of the gender. This is actually a very important problem for GPT-3 should solve, since this language model can write a story, but the story can be biased on its trained data. Filtering and clearing data should be important, and I think coming up with a very nice idea regarding how to test if the model is not biased into race religion, or the gender. Finally, here is the conclusion. GPT-3 is not perfect yet. As you saw, it has lower score on some of NLP tasks. But we saw the scaling in performance without the using fine-tuning and discussed the social impact of this kind of model. Despite many limitations and weaknesses, these results suggest that a very large language model may be an important ingredient in the development of adaptable general language system. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.